Hello everybody, let's go straight to the point. What the hell is Gilets Jaunes and what is going on in France? Because of course I've heard some snickering about the fact that France is on strike for a change. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, France does have a culture of protests. We kind of made that pretty clear since the revolution. But with three deaths, 800 injured and almost as many arrested at the end of November, the situation is pretty intense, even for France. It's so huge indeed that it's even reached the adult movie industry. So as an advocate of the French language and its culture, I thought it'd be good to contextualize the whole situation for you to understand better what's happening. Don't get me wrong, the purpose of this video is not political, but rather informative. I'll be as impartial as possible, showing you facts, and at the end of it, you'll be absolutely free to form your own opinion. However, this is vulgarization, so I encourage you to study the whole fuss with different sources in order to strengthen your opinion. First of all, gilet jaune means yellow jackets, because it's been chosen as the symbol for this movement. In fact, since 2008, all drivers are required by law to have this high visibility jacket in their vehicle, in case of an emergency. It's a very efficient tool, it's striking, all drivers already have one, and those who don't can easily get one. What originally started the movement was a protest against the significant increase in fuel taxes in 2018, and even more increase planned for 2019. It all began on the internet on October, with a petition. One of the things that justifies this tax is to reduce fossil fuel consumption, which is an honorable initiative. So from the government standpoint, and especially the current French president, His Excellency Mr. Emmanuel Macron, they're trying hard to reach that environmental goal. Speaking of, Mr. Macron is drastically losing popularity in his country. He may shine on an international level, as for example, his English is actually pretty decent. On top of that, he is rather young and dynamic, so he's often compared to the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, for his physical appearance. However, Mr. Macron also has a background in banking. Indeed, he was an investment banker at the Rothschild Bank. I don't personally have anything against banks, but it's not only in France that they have a suspicious reputation among the public. Reputation is one thing, but the truth is that Mr. Macron's politics has in effect been more beneficial to wealthy people. For instance, he has crapped the contentious wealth tax on everything except for property assets, reducing by three times the number of people paying it. He has also introduced a 30% flat tax rate on capital gain, dividends and interest, and removed the top marginal band of payroll tax. All this to say that Mr. Macron has now received the title President of the Rich, and this is not the best scenario in a country like France, where the great majority of the people come from the middle class and the working class. So beyond the fact that this part of the French people feels like Macron can't really relate to them because he's always been financially comfortable, they now feel betrayed by him and his government, as they feel like they're paying what the wealthiest are not. With the continuous rise of inflation, more and more people are financially struggling and they've reached a point where they're just fed up with the whole system. On the field it's obviously more chaotic. As always, the media play a great part in it, but the government has also made some avoidable mistakes on that level. The protest methods are as usual, demonstrations, civil disobedience, barricades, blocking traffic and so on. But of course, the more it grows, the more excesses are expected, and in this case it gets pretty brutal. As a matter of fact, during these protests in France, there are what's called les casseurs, literally the breakers. These people are vandals who use the march as an excuse to destroy things. In many cases, these people don't really care about the claims of the protests. They're actually fought by some demonstrators because they're not helping to establish a dialogue. But you can imagine that in a crowd of people, it's very difficult to determine who's a breaker and who's not. Of course, the violence from both policemen and demonstrators shocks and feeds each side the government accuses radicals to be the root of all the brutality, and extreme right and left wings point the finger at each other. This is really tricky to sort out, but what's not is the government's allegations. One embarrassing moment was the posting by the Twitter account T. Macron of the picture of a man raising his hand, which was interpreted as a Nazi salute. This was retweeted by deputy Naima Muchu. But it doesn't stop here. On the actual footage, you can clearly hear the man saying, which is not a Nazi salute, but an ancient Roman one. The man was actually comparing Macron to the Emperor Caesar. And here comes the most embarrassing part. The deputy who retweeted this fake news, and now has deleted it of course, is none other than the rapporteur of the law against fake news. Now of course, when you have a big movement growing like this, getting more and more supporters, it's a great opportunity to join in and add your own claims. For instance, that's exactly what Louis Boyard did. He is the president of the National High School Student Union and he's joining the Yellow Jackets movement to request better conditions for his peers. So to conclude, there is a French president and his government facing the anger of a very diverse population. On one hand, the president wants to maintain his politics and reach his environmental goals through taxes. On the other hand, there is a people that feels betrayed and unheard. 
It's fed up with all the financial struggles and demands justice. And in the middle of it all you have breakers, people who are not open to dialogue and other people with different claims. So that's what's going on in France.